2004 across the Sebring. We have a, uh, a bunch of codes on it, but I'm going to work on this um, EVAP system, small and medium leak, uh, P0456 and 442. And I also have P0440, general EVAP system failure, and also this uh, circuit high on a uh, vent solenoid. Now this is very complicated, it's not very complicated, but it's a very confusing system because this NVLD, it's a natural vacuum leak detection system. The problem is that uh, Chrysler does not have a fuel tank pressure sensor. And uh, we really can't observe the you know, vacuum or pressure in the system and um, now the only input that the computer is using is actually a switch that's uh, getting that's basically a diaphragm on that NVLD unit that will actually close a certain uh, inches of water around two inches of water that switch is gonna gonna close and the computer is gonna see that input and um, it will um, uh, look how long the switch stays closed but you know for us that doesn't really matter that much what matters to us is how to find the leak and the, how we test the system and make sure that diaphragm and the switch are, they're, they're working fine now in order to uh, test the switch itself you have to build up the vacuum you can build up the pressure because it's never going to close the, and um, so what I made a uh, I'm using <coughs> you guys seen me using this before uh, this is a, a GM uh, fuel uh, tank pressure sensor and uh, I just put a little bit, couple of hoses here, and I, I'm using a Chrysler um, uh, fuel tank uh, cap. And uh, on the other side, I have a special pump. Uh, this pump is uh, I got it from my work, and the nice thing about this one is that it actually has an internal valve, so it will close itself. It's you're basically pumping the negative pressure on this side of the pump, but the pump itself is going to close. It has a diaphragm in here, so it is going to seal the system for me. It's a really nice setup. Now, on this car, I've noticed that uh, this lady is using this aftermarket cap, so this can be, of course, a problem as well. Now, the setup. I have my uh, 5 volt regulator, uh, it's hooked up to my battery and then it's hooked up to my uh, pressure sensor and then of course I have a test leads hooked up to my, uh, to my uh, Pico and a uh, lab scope. To my, and uh, so we're gonna go to a, uh, we're gonna look some data here, we're gonna look a uh, <clears throat> display and I'm gonna look at the uh, this pressure sensor and then we're going to build up the vacuum and see if this switch is going to close. Okay, I hope you guys can see. Now there's a lot of noise on this signal, but that's okay. I can filter that later. So right now I'm just going to I'm going to seal. I'm going to close this cap on my uh, fuel tank, and I'm going to start applying the vacuum to my uh, system. You can see every time I press my pump, you know, we're dropping the you know pressure. And uh, now we can see that after it reaches a two inches of water, my switch is is closed. So this tells me that you know the computer is receiving the signal, the switch is working. And now we're going to stop and see if this pressure, I mean, this is negative pressure, is going to stay or is it going to now? All this depends, of course, on the amount of fuel, the temperature, and all that. But uh, you kind of looking for a couple of minutes at least for this vacuum to. Um, to stay and um, we'll see. <clears throat> it seems like it's uh, it's holding fine. And uh, my next uh, suspect, of course, would be that uh, uh, aftermarket uh, cap on uh, on on the res reservoir. So it, it looks okay, it's holding pretty steady right now. The next step, we'll have to uh, pressurize the system. Now to pressurize this uh, Chrysler system, you have to actually pressurize it. You have to seal the system, so you can actually apply the positive pressure from your smoke machine in two different ways. Uh, what I like to do, I actually like to go in the back. Uh, this way I can actually also uh, uh, check my uh, purge valve to make sure the purge valve is sealing, which this one seems to be okay. But 
because of this um, diaphragm, if you go under the hood and you start pushing the, your, your pressure, uh, this switch is never going to close your system. It, it, uh, it will never, you're always going to have a large leak because the uh, diaphragm in the back is just going to stay open and um, it's, you, you're never, you're never going to achieve anything. So what you have to do, you have to clamp the uh, vent hose you, it's easy to find. You just kind of look. Uh, the charcoal canister is going to be a big hose that leads to a, uh, a little filter, a little, little air filter. So you want to uh, clamp that hose to um, seal the system. Now, as I said, I, I like to just go from the back. I just pull that hose off, and uh, then I can just push the my, my smoke into the whole the whole system. So anyhow, I can see that my uh, vacuum is holding pretty good, actually. And um, I don't I don't see much of a problem here at all. I mean, if I have a leak, you know, by now I would lose my vacuum and uh, and my switch would open. So it looks it looks pretty good. Uh, now you can see that I actually modified my um, I made a custom probe on this uh, pressure sensor. I don't I don't look I'm not looking at the voltage. I'm looking at actually a uh, pressure. And uh, that's easy to do. I have one video that I customize my probes. And okay, so let's just, we can actually stop. Now we can filter this a little bit. And we can see it's, it's staying pretty steady. And um, can go back where I started to, um, you can see it's 1.9 inches of water. That's where that, around two inches of water, the, uh, that switch, it will uh, see right there. Let's just measure when the switch actually closed. Yeah, 2.2.9 2 or something like that. So, and uh, so now we can actually let's just start it again. I'm going to build up a little bit more vacuum, and uh, then we're going to go to a bi-directional control and uh, open a uh, purge valve. We can actually hear the, uh, the va vacuum, uh, the, the diaphragm in the in that MVLD unit. Okay, and. Uh, I'm gonna exit here and I'm go to uh, I think system tests. Okay, that's a purge vapor test. And uh, when we open this, uh, ah, it's annoying. okay, so I'm gonna open, let's see. Unfortunately, I think the car has to be running for this test. To, yeah, it's not going to do it. Yeah, the computer is not... Uh, that's unfortunate, but... Now, if I if I start the car, what's going to happen, the, um, the computer is going to activate the um, vent valve. And so the, on, the, on this system, actually, vent valve opens the system, not close. When the vent valve is energized, it will actually open the um, uh, evap and it's it's gonna drain so let's we can actually start we can do that we can see now when I, when i start the car this should go to um, atmospheric pressure right now so let me build up some more that's actually other confusing part about this uh, you you think this this vent valve would uh, seal the system no it, it does not it actually keeps the system open Actually, what happens now? I have my uh, my vent valve is open. I mean, uh, my my purge valve. Let's see. I'm gonna block it. There you go. Okay, let's let's try this again. It's kind of messed me up because I had the. Um, let's just go as an exit, exit here, and uh, let's look at the data display. I'll just go back to that switch. I think what happened again. Uh, it, they, uh, as soon as I started the car, that the purge valve was open and applied more pressure more vacuum to the system. 
Okay, so uh, now the switch is closed. Let's start the car again. And pretty soon, this should go to zero. The, the PCM, there you go, see that? And the switch is open. So that's the time when that valve, vent valve activates and basically opens the EVA. So that's, that's you have to, that's, oh my goodness, that's okay. Uh, so I lost my communication to the key out. So that's why you have to, um, to, you have to manually apply the vacuum because it's never going to close on you. And uh, especially when a car running, it's not, nothing's going to happen. That, that switch is going to stay open all the time because that, that valve, the vent valve, you can see here, open immediately. That's you can actually measure from the time. Well, I don't know when did I actually start the car, but it was not long. It was not long at all when um, I uh, it was like, I don't know, like 14 seconds. So this is time when I was building a vacuum, so probably like a 10 seconds or so. The, um, the vent valve is going gonna, is gonna to energize, the computer is going to energize the vent valve and uh, it's going to open and that's going to be it. You're going to have an open switch and uh, you're never going to figure out anything. So this kind of tells me as well that my, of course, my vacuum, my, my vent valve is working. That, that code for the vent valve, I'm not sure why did it happen, but so far this test tells me that, you know, the vent valve works as well. Now, so the other thing I can do right now is to a, uh, uh, put that original aftermarket cap on a fuel tank and pressurize the system and see if that leaks or not. So I took the filter off and it was full of dust and that will have to be replaced. Easiest way to find the unit, you just look, look back and look for the filter and that's, uh, this is just the air filter. And uh, now the LVL, NVLD unit is actually looks like a little mushroom. It sits on top of the charcoal canister. You can actually see this little round piece there as the sits on top of it. So anyhow, I got my hose hooked up to it, and now I'm gonna push the pressure into the NVLD into the EVAP system, and uh, let's see what happens. Now before I push the smoke, I'm just gonna push the air. I customized my smoke machine. I'm just going to see if, uh, if I'm going to have a large leak or some sort of, so far it's actually, you know, this pressure should rise and this ball should drop down. And you can see it's slowly rising, but yeah, looks like we have a leak. And I can actually smell, I can smell a lot of fuel here. All right, so we can see how this gauge is kind of struggling, you know, to, uh, to go up. So let's go ahead and push some smoke. Turn this off. Now I'm pushing the smoke in a, in a system see if we're gonna have anything here there you go yep yeah this thing is not working at all I'm going to put the cap from my car to try to see everything as well. And let's redo the test. And we can see the gauge immediately goes up. There you go, nice. Let's just wait. 
for the ball to do drop all the way down. Got no smoke. And it's all the way down. Let's stop the flow. And pressure stays. I like it. Okay, that's how I attack this NVLD or uh, eSIM uh, Chrysler or Dodge or Jeep EVAP system. The uh, again, the biggest problem is that these things don't have a pressure sensor, and uh, many times you have an input issue. You have a, uh, a valve that that's that um, diaphragm that does not close at, the, at that two inches of uh, uh, vacuum. And um, so until you build a vacuum, you can't really test that unit itself. On this car, this car's going to need a new um, filter and new tank uh, cap, and then that, that should take care of it. Nice other thing on NVL and NVLD, don't get confused. The vent valve is there to keep the system open, not to seal the system. This, seal, this system seals itself when it reaches a certain, certain vacuum. And uh, you could see as soon as I started the car, the system opened because that vent, that, that vent valve, active, the uh, computer activated the vent valve and opened the system. And, uh, and that happens every time. So we can also, you know, check the wiring and all that kind of stuff. But this tells me that that valve is working fine because as soon as the computer, it, it, it was like 15 seconds, but it was probably less than 10 seconds by the time I build a vacuum and an EVAP and get to the car, started the car, you know, that was in that meantime. So around 10 to 15 seconds, you should see that vacuum go back back to normal atmospheric pressure. And uh, um, that's what I do here. I mean, that's uh, the system works very well for me. Uh, and uh, I've diagnosed uh, quite a few cars this way. And uh, that vacuum pump and uh, GM uh, fuel pressure sensor, I mean, uh, fuel tank pressure sensor, works very well and you can observe the vacuum look at for the switch to close now if the if you are able to maintain a vacuum but switch doesn't close then you have a you know problem with a, um, a wiring where you know if the if you have an open you know that that switch actually is it's a ground side switch that drops that voltage down to uh, uh, to zero and that's how that computers look at the closed uh, system and uh, if that doesn't happen if you have an open wire broken wire that that switch is going to stay open all the time that the signal from the switch is going to stay open all the time it's never going to drop to zero so anyhow i hope well, this was not too confusing but uh, yeah the pressure is still okay and i'm quite happy with it thank you so much and I'll see you next time guys bye bye